denim is in demand at Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston. Get cash on the spot for everything denim. Bring in your trendy and classic styles of gently used name brand denim. Get paid for your denim shorts, skirts, jackets, jeans, and more. We're looking for denim that is blue, black, or a bold color. And jeans and styles like mom jeans, boot cut, baggy, flared, and ripped. We want everything denim. Sell your denim for cash at Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Hashtag no music, no intro. Saints Block Party Podcast. And today was a frenzy. This was the roster cut down day in the NFL. Teams went from 90 to 53. And kind of got a lot to talk about. I mean, first, first thing from the jump, we got to talk about in terms of the Saints Saints roster cuts is that the big news from today was Will Lutz being traded from the Saints to the Denver Broncos, reuniting with Sean Payton. They got like what it was a conditional seventh. I don't even know if it's conditional. I don't. I don't. Know. Yeah, a seventh. I don't know. Nor nor the I don't see. Do I really care? I both you and I like you could just watch that preseason game against the Texans, man. Like you just. You saw it. Like, it was written all over Will Lutz's face. He yeah. posted it in the Discord, also on Twitter, just like his his post-game, his post-game conference he did after that game. It was just like, it was very telling to us, right, that he kind of saw the writing on the wall. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you just had, just off that, I was like, man, if anybody knows what's going on, it's him. And if right. he's telling you, like, he knew that leash. Like, like if you look at through camp, you know, they were about even, you mm-hmm. know, as far as their performance. And, you know, some people thought since he was the vet, he would get the. We know, did. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it just made sense. But <clears throat> from a different standpoint, it just kind of makes sense to go younger, bro. Like, go young and see what that new talent is, you know. I, yeah, so. I don't know if I don't know if this was like the death knell, but that there was a practice, was it last week where he just missed mm-hmm. like three kicks in that practice, bruh? Like for me, that was a huge thing because it kind of just goes back to like what our our fears were as as fans. It's just he had been become very inconsistent, man. Like Straight up. And so for him to have like three recent kicks, three missed kicks in a tight kicker battle in practice towards the end of like training camp, like, bruh. And the fact that like uh I do the Apple Watch Bandit posted earlier today, every year his completion percentage just went down. You know now, what I'm saying? I mean the numbers had, don't lie, bro. You know? He he had, he has missed some very clutch makeable kicks these last two seasons. And I, I said it, man, on, on the recap for the Texas game, like when you have a defensive head coach, like those three points, when, when you have someone who thinks that their defense can essentially like keep it manageable, keep the games close. So those three points are vital, My, vital. Man. Crucial, bro. Cause if he, cause when you miss, it changes field position. It's like, it's all bad. Right. So for me, I really think when when Groupie went out there and he nailed that fifty yarder, bro, and it and it was like no doubt, it was yeah. no doubt. I was like, I think that might have done it. The funny thing, we gotta talk about this. We gotta talk about Will Love's agent just going on a tip. Like, like I understand you 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 represent your client. You get you right. you getting paid. You doing your job. But have you seen your man kick like this, bro? Like, what you, what you talking about? Oh, like, that bro, like. You got like you might need a job. Your man might need a job at some point. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't burn bridges. Like as an agent, don't burn bridges. You could have easily say, look, my my client, you know, played this hard out. He was outstanding this offseason. He's ready to go to Denver Broncos and be one of the best NFL kickers right. in the league. It's like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't do all that, bro. Chill out. Just chill out. Relax. The, the, the Saints, the Saints got <laughs> He's the most talented. He was the most talented player on the roster. I'm like, <laughs> what? Come on now, bro. I'm not sure. Um, next. So this 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 movie wasn't this move wasn't shocking to me. It's like one of the first moves that were announced today is that 
Bradley Roby was was cut, which really clears the pathway for Alante Taylor uh, to become the starter at slot. It's so what's funny to me is that with Alante starting that slot, there's a there's like this general trepidation from the fans at him being at slot. Yeah. And part of me understands it, but I'm like, but what was the alternative? <laughs> like, right. like, I'm just like, do we not remember Roby at slot? Like he was terrible. Terrible. Like, anytime CD Deuce missed time and you bring in Roby, it's like, ah, oh, dang. It was, so but before Bradley Roby got cut, Jordan Schultz um came out, you know, saying that there was interest in him from around the league and potential team of teams wanted to trade for him. I had kind of left a little bre- breadcrumb stating that I thought Bradley Roby was available in these last couple of weeks. I can say with certainty. So the outrage that the Saints didn't get anything for him didn't really bother me that much. But I will say that there were teams who were offering something for Bradley Roby. Mm-hmm. What some what something is, I don't know. I would I would ima- I would assume probably like fifth round pick. And like later, so like from that perspective, it's like, but well, why would you just not take the fifth? Like if you're going to cut him anyway, just yeah, just take the fifth or or sixth or whatever pick it was that they were offering because there were it sounds like there was not just one offer from the table like for for Roby from a team. There was like multiple offers, but he's cut. It is what it is. <laughs> um, but the Alante thing at slot is going to happen, and we we've said it all. During this offseason slash training camp, get your best eleven on the field, man. I get sure. it. Alante's he's not that's he's not played the slot before. He's not his natural position. He's gonna have some growing pains. There's gonna be some coverage busts. Prepare for. It. I'm just saying, as a, as a fan, prepare for it. But like, get give me the the young guy in there at that position with talent, with like elite cornerback traits, bro. Like yeah. elite. Rather than the old veteran, where it's like, well, he's gonna, there's gonna be coverage bust with Bradley Roby anyway. So, b- might as well go with the young guy and let him learn learn the position and grow into it. Right, right. And the things he has to learn is all mental. Yes, it's, it's spacing. It's mm-hmm. you know understanding your leverage points because you got two way goals. It's but the stuff that he's good at tackling. Uh, he has length. Pause. He. I mean, just the things that he has innate ability to do just makes me feel like he's gonna be fine there. You know be fine, bro. He's be fine. He's gonna get beat sometimes. Yeah, but he's gonna be fine there, bro. He's gonna make some hits. You could use him in the blitz packages because he's in the slot. But you could, you know, you could fake, you know, fake blitzes or actually bring the own blitzes. Right. You could do so much from the slot with him. You know, that with you, that, that there is no way in hell you could have done that. What? Well, like I remember, like the times they would send Bradley Roby on a corner uh, blitz, bro. <laughs> Like, wow. it's nothing, bro. It's like, <laughs> I was just so surprised at the reaction. It's like, we- like it was weird. It was weird. It was weird, bro. Because, like, you know, me and you, we we will bash DA in a, All- in a heartbeat. Like, we we have no problems. Him you cutting know. Roby and starting Alante at slot, honestly, is like a, a, a growth, bro. Like it's a little That's growth. Not like- I was like, this is pretty good. Like, okay, bro. Now, we'll, we'll get into it with the whole Jalen Smith thing. But, okay, thank you. But but it, it was like, okay, cool. I, 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 I was like, this is him saying, like, this is my defense. These are my players. I'm going to put, you know, I don't know if DA's listening to the Saints Block Party podcast in the awesome time, time, bro. Maybe he's like, oh, no, best 11. Like, he writing notes, best 11 best on. Best 11 on the field. <laughs> works so so the reaction was a little again i didn't even really see a lot of the reaction i've been so swamped with like work these last Mm -hmm. two days like just like just tough like tough shit bro just doing it on olivia benson bro own it bro bro tell me why last night just to be able to like prove to like the courts i like this is this thing is happening where i know it's where i know it's happening but i was gonna i was gonna pop up at one of my clients house last night at 9 p.m bro 9 p.m say hey can such and such is saying they live here is is she here oh what where where are they anyway 
but I didn't do it. I was I was too burnt out last. Didn't do it. So um I even I haven't been really on Twitter today. I've been like really not in our Discord because I've been so busy, but I was able to catch up on what the Saints did transactional wise and well the growth in Bradley Roby and kind of letting that happen still 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 kept, just, let's rewind, bro. Like well, does this is this team allergic to draft picks? The the why I say why I say that I I gotta go back to the whole Marcus Davenport thing from last year. I don't like talking about old shit from time to time. Like, like they had a they had an offer where they could have traded two first at the trade deadline last year and maybe got a second or third from him, bro. And they said no, we 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 rolling with two first. That's our guy. That's our guy. He made he made a TFL against the Raiders against Devontae Adams on fourth down. Like we not we not doing that, right? And then with Bradley Roby, they cut him. They could have got a fifth for him. They could have got a six. I, I'm guessing a fifth, sixth, or seventh, and they just cut him. It's just it's it's weird. It's weird team like that. Just, just take the picks, man. Just take the picks. I, it's it's weird. Yeah, it, there's they have a weird thing where they kind of love their, they kind of overrate their players. <laughs> self scouting, baby. Self scouting, bro. And it, as far as the trade Roby, like I just don't know. Like you know, I mean, he's a thirty-one year old corner that can't play on the outside. It's like I don't, I don't know what you can get for that. Um, I'm sure, like I'm sure they could have got something. You know what I'm saying? Like I somebody. Mean, I- this, this is like a long shot, right? So I don't want people saying like, "Let see, her with Adam said." So let's say that they traded Roby for a fifth, potentially to a team. Who did the Saints draft in the fifth round this year? I don't remember. Jake was eight. No, was it, no, Jake was fourth. What was eighteen was in the six? Jake eighteen was Jake, six, right? Six. Yeah. So maybe it was uh, uh um the office of guard. Uh, Salavarde, the one. Salavarde, Sal- yeah, Winter Soldier. What Salavarde? What is- <laughs> <laughs> Salami, no. Um, but I'm just saying, like, it's just like those little, yeah. little lottery tickets, man. Like, and we'll get into it with At Perry. At Perry made the squad, bro. Made the squad, like, man. Like, and, and I don't think it was like really much in doubt after like his early preseason right. performance. So while I get. Part of me is like, oh, it's just a fifth, sixth, seventh. Sometimes those little flyers, man, you just they sometimes they just hit. So that's why not just have it in your back pocket. You know, you know what you know, you go into seven eleven, you go to a convenience store, you see what the powerball is, you got a couple of dollars. Oh, let me let me get let me get, you know, powerball, let me get the mega million. Bro, you never know, bro. You might hit it. You might hit it. And I also wonder if it was uh just kind of a good looking out on Roby. So he can pick it's like just go like bro, go be a free agent. He was traded to the Saints from the Texans. Right. Um, we got we got our work out of it. Um. So did did we? That was like that was not a great trade. What and did we is, give up? Like a third. A third. I, I am very. I saw Pete be tripping though, and that was the year. That was the we like our wide receiver room year. Uh, hold on. I got it. Now I got. I want to say it was a third, and I. And it's funny because I, I called right. it like a couple of week, a couple of weeks before it happened. Uh, I think you're right, bro. Yeah, bro. It's a fucking 2022 third round pick, and no, and a 2023 six round pick to the Texas, bro. We couldn't trade this man back for a fifth or a sixth. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's where the the annoyance comes from. <laughs> and if you remember when we traded for him, he didn't immediately hit the field. Like, correct, yeah, because because CD Deuce was playing. Um, I, like we were solid. Like we were okay. I can't remember who else was at corners. Lattimore, I don't yeah, know, I can't remember. But <clears throat> Sean Payton tripping, bro. Anyway, so that, no, because that was 2020. What, what was what was Sean Payton's last season? 21. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was Sean Payton's last season. The New Orleans Saints completed their trade for cornerback Bradley Roby on Thursday, sending a 2022 third round pick and a 2023 conditional sixth round pick to the Texans. Mm. 
DA defensive coordinator Dennis Allen said Thursday he feels like the Saints just added another piece to the puzzle. That was a terrible fucking trade. That was a terrible <laughs> trade, bro. Like he, peak, bro. Roby was not good. <laughs> what the snake? Like nothing about it was, was anyway. Moving on. Moving on. Bradley Roby thing. Um th- I had no intel, no insight about the Jalen Smith thing. But I something in my bones, just knowing this team, bro, I just didn't. Nah, you was, I was on like, it, bro. You was on I, it. I just, I, just, I just know this team, Ryan. I know them. I know them. No, like, our eyes did not lie to us. We saw what we saw in preseason. I was like, I don't think that's, I don't, for whatever reason, it's not enough. And I know that, you know, DA was quoted today and saying, like, he could, he potentially absolutely could see Jalen Smith as a part of the team. It's like, why risk that? Like, why risk it? So now, now he's, I, I don't, because he's been in the league for so long, I don't think he could be claimed. Or maybe he can be. No, I don't even know. He can't be. He can't be. No, he's, right? he's vested. So he's vested. So, but it's like, why even, Try like why even try to get cute with it? Because the tape out there now. Because people saying right. like, well, he was already out there in August. Why was he, anybody? He got the tape out there now. Like there's preseason tape now where people like, yeah, I'm gonna throw him a bag. And he right. got to throw a big bag. Just nope. a couple of dollars more in the Saints. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. All, all it's all it's gonna take, bro. And you, I could see, and again, no intel. See Ryan Nielsen, like, oh man, like our- that's what I'm saying. Ryan Nielsen, Terry Fontenot, they just like they, you know, they just watched everything, baby, just to hurt the Saints. They do it. Th- that just to hurt them, just to fuck shit up for them. Kate, bro, Caden Ellis and Jalen Smith about to terrorize us when we play the Falcons, bro. Uh, <laughs> it's, gonna be the, I, it's gonna be the Jalen that <laughs> helmet to helmet AK, bro. When we play that damn, bro. <laughs> I just hate that cute shit, man. Why do I get cute with it? If you like the player, keep him on the roster. Figure something else out. I just I, you think somebody was gonna claim Zach Bond or something like that. Like, oh. Can we talk? Got to pull a Zach Morrison right now, bro. How? Without saying he's a special core team player, and this is coming from someone who I don't put a lot of Zach Bond's failure on Zach Bond. I put that on coaching. I put that on he is not put in a position where best suits his skill set. How does Zach Bond make the team over Jalen Smith just considering their pre- preseason play? It makes no sense. I, I, I would have loved for anyone when DA was doing his presser today to ask him that question. Don't know if it was asked, didn't, didn't watch the presser, was too busy. No, but it wasn't. Just like what? What? <sighs> so, like the day started, I was like, "Oh, there, there's growth with the Saints." Like DA is kind of like making it his own, and then it's like, uh, "Okay, <laughs> there it, is. there it is." And I get it. Like they feel in their mind, they got Warner, they got Demario, they good, and then that, after that, they got you know Sewell, they got Demarco Jackson, who they drafted last year. And maybe they don't see like a huge difference and distinction between a Jalen Smith and a DeMarco Jackson. I'm just saying from a perspective of someone who's watched a lot of football, I'm not not a coach, I'm not a front office guy. Jalen Smith's tape in preseason leapt off the fucking screen. Like it was undeniable. Like those two back to back plays, I don't know if you were in the in the y'all know you watch at that point, but those two back to back plays he made against the Texans were oh, so yeah. Bruh, there and, is not a linebacker on the team that can make that play except D- like Demario in his prom, bruh. And look, I don't know how much. I mean, we know Da has say over the fifty three, but I don't know how much he's into this cut down day gamesmanship. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. this is where your executives and your front office do their work. Because you got so many rules going on. You got some players that hit the waiver wire, some players don't. Right. You have the whole veteran thing. If you're a vested player, your contract is guaranteed. If you're on the roster on the first week, you got all these little things that teams just kind of play around with. 
And I like I said, I just hate all the cute stuff. Like if you like the player, keep him on the roster. But because to me, when I heard DA, when I looked at the, he was looking like I ain't won't cut him. <laughs> Like, I won't, I won't J Long on the team. Like that's what it looked like. He wanted to say, but it was like he's just saying, like I hope he come back. Like I really do. Oh. And you know, J Line tweeted mm-hmm. earlier today. He tweeted something positive. He was like, I don't. It was something that was like, oh, thank, you, thank the Lord. Like, like he just like I, if it sounded like I mean, I'm reading it too sounds- much into a tweet, but it sounded like he like I'm with a team. I know I'm gonna be with a team. I ain't tripping. like like a, like a nudge nudge wink wink type of thing. Right. And we see this all the time with uh, players. But we also see all the time with players where another team comes swooping in. It's in there, Wait, big head, Texas. Hey, big head. Wearing that, wearing that sundress. <laughs> it would like, take like, much. Like, what, what, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Like, what, what if Dallas feels like they need a little more linebacking depth? You hear me? I'm just, it, all it takes is one team. So, we'll, we'll see. Speaking of people that we just can't get rid of. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. You've got questions? O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, oh, oh. O'Reilly Auto Parts. How the fuck is Traquan Smith still on this team? Right. Unbelievable. <laughs> not a not a preseason snap, bro. Been hurt since August six. That's like five days in the training camp, bro. But those both five days, bro, beforehand, that man was out there cooking a block. He was cooking and blocking. Man, he could block. What a blocker. <laughs> Thanks, block party. <laughs> I'm a block that party man out there. You know what? If if if, if, if we if we send Trey Quan a shirt, bro, and he wore it during the presser, <laughs> Trey Quan <can> tell <laughs> I ain't slammed him no more, bro. No, no more Block party, baby. That's what I'm here for. See that but until the then, until then, so my guy explained to me how this man made the team because I, I, I don't understand it. I'm I, just I shocked at how many wide receivers they kept. Okay, so it's well, Michael Thomas, Olave, Shahid, Traquan, At Perry. Keith and then and Keith, Keith backward. That's six, man. That was, man. Six wide receivers. It's a lot. It's a lot. That, do you that just surprise me? Do you look? Do you look any deeper into that as to like where they feel maybe Shahid is, or you know, with the injury? I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. It's hard to say. I don't know. I just I like I like the six. I like the six that they have. But that's a nice group, man. Like, right. I, I can do without think, Traquan. I mean, I just don't count him. Like, he's just there. <laughs> but it's a nice group. You know what I'm saying? Like, if Traquan, is. Is, if Traquan is your sixth receiver, it's not terrible. It's not. <laughs> it's, I just don't want him as my sixth, Ryan. I just well, don't want, I don't I don't want, want him. I feel like I'll take Shaq Davis. I'll take anybody, bro. But it's like. Kirkland had that. Little so the little juice like I got juice. Bring, bring him on. Anyway, um, I I don't know if there was like suspicion leading up to, like prior to like the Texas game, but I feel like people thought like maybe like the Jimmy Graham thing was just like a cute little like priest. Like no man, like Jimmy Graham has played like played well in training camp and yeah. that Texas game all but solidified, you know, he was making the team. Yeah. No, like, I think the Texas games really did kind of put the concrete. Yes. Like, he's, yeah. he's making the team, bro. Because you got to think about it, not just him. You got to understand, like, he, if you keep him, there's, like, a younger player you're not bringing on the team that 
could potentially be like a okay, maybe he not might, might not be better than Jimmy Graham this year, but maybe as he grows with the team, could be better. So you talking about your father in law, bro? <laughs> That's what you say. You think he's a progress stop? I'm like, come on, bro. Like, yeah, this shit. Oh, Lucas Crow. That's Lucas what Jimmy Crow is. Bro. And I like Lucas Crow. I think there's right. something there potentially. I do too. At some point, but it's like, like he'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? He'll be all right. I think he'll be just fine. So, but I, I love it, bro. Like, I love it. I think it's, it's not only a great story, but I think, you know, Jimmy Graham is going to provide something, bro. Like, yeah, man. Like, I think he's going to provide meaningful production to this team. I think in the red zone, in third down, uh, YOLO balls. Right. Uh, it's it's going to make a difference, bro. I don't know why my light keep going off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like the bedroom sometimes when you, you get with someone in the past and she's like, no, no, baby, turn them on. No, 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 let me turn them off. No, 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 turn them on. No, no, no. <laughs> Make up your mind. <laughs> uh, oh, just overall, right? Ellis Ellis Merriweather gets gets cut. So as of right now, there's only two. Well, I guess Kurt Merritt counts as a like. So there's three running backs on the team, not counting AK who, who during his suspension. So it's Jamal Williams, Kendra Miller, um, and Kurt Mer- Kurt Merritt. How do, how do you feel – there's something about the running back room with the AK suspension, and maybe it's just maybe I have that – you know, we saw a little from Kendra that we wanted to see um, get the Chargers, you know, in terms of that 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 real route, scored the touchdown. Mm-hmm. But it just – I don't know. It seems like something goes wrong within these, like, the first three games. It might – like, the running back room may get a little – kind of quickly i just can't i can't believe that it's set right now okay i can't believe that that's how we going into the season just with that kind of depth they're running back maybe they will you know maybe right but i i just feel like there's another move to be made um and we'll see what it is whether it's bringing uh merriweather back on the team at some point maybe next week something like that like we'll see because we see this every start of the season man it's like so many transactions happen yep between cut day and next wednesday you know when you start practicing even later than that sometime the weekend right before the game yeah. starts. we've seen so, it so we're gonna see a lot of things moving around i just don't feel like that running back that that third running back spot is set you know what i'm saying right it could be but we'll see uh i i guess Maybe Jeff Duncan put this out, but I, if he did, like I didn't see it on my timeline, just like the team got a lot younger. Yes. This this has become a, a much younger team in, in essentially like one season, right? Like, um, Sign the whole draft class. Yeah. Which hadn't happened since 2017. Like the whole that's draft class man. made a team. That's you impressive. Know? It is, bro. Like. That's interesting. That that makes your team younger. That's why the draft's so important, bro. It's like a injection of youth, yeah, man, into your team, man, and it just lets you keep going. Especially if they're good, you know. If they're not good, it don't matter. <laughs> not at all. Uh, before I forget this, going back to the whole kicker thing. Now flipping over to Kapunner. Yeah, like Gilligan out. Lou Headley. Is it Hep? No, he he no Hep. Headley. Headley. Yeah. Headley. Yeah. In. Australian 30 year old punter. 30. Rookie. 30. Uh, me, I was about to say like agent, nothing but a number, but then I realized that Aaliyah said that when she was with. Anyway, I'm not. Let's just. <laughs> just getting, that out, getting that out there. Um, How crazy is that they put out an album? AJ, don't put a note. You know, you know what? Not funny, but you know who was like telling these things? She was like, my daughter was like, Dad, do you realize that the song "Ain't Ain't Nothing About a Number" like, like Aaliyah wrote that when she was like such and such age? And I was like, "Yeah." And she, do you realize that when she wrote it, like, you know, like R. Kelly like produced the album? And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> um, 
like the writing was on the wall, man. Like I was at those joint practices or joint practice against the Chargers. Blake looked ungood, like ungood punting the ball. Um, Thomas Morstead got cut. So. Oh, no. I don't know. Can't can't call it. You know, I don't know if you go go with the young guy, bring back in Thomas Morstead, who's at like a career revival. I, I don't know how you how you gauge that. But I just I just I I I have said it and I said it like for stone in for weeks that Gilligan was not making this team. Yeah. Yeah. And it came to fruition, man. I and mean, it's kind of crazy because he's still young. He's what twenty four. Yeah, um, he could he could possibly bounce back, but oh, easily. I mean, he's been given opportunities too. Like I'm sure they wanted him to, yeah, kind of run with it. But man, he just he didn't couldn't take it, bro. Like ah, and like I said, I I don't know if Headley is the guy for sure going forward, but he's the guy for now because he's you know he's solid enough. But I really like I like to have a weapon at Punter, man. I like to have somebody right, like, especially a defensive team like this. Flip the fucking team field, back, bro. flip the Ooh. field, target punt, all that stuff. Like, man, that's what I want. So just got to wait and see, bro. Like Marstead, it seems like he's gonna be back with the Jets from the way he sounded, but man, I, I, I give him a call, like, man, you know, you know oh. you love New Orleans. You know you love New Orleans, bro. Exactly. Um, anything else from from Rock? Oh, so like like you said, the the roster is not set in stone. It's going to be involving. Perfect example: the Colts cut Akwadi Muhammad today. Like, are are the Saints done at edge? They shouldn't be. So I guess my question to you is like, what are, like with how the roster is currently finalized? What have you? What are your concerns? Concerns about the roster in its current figuration? Offensive line concerns me every year, especially the depth. Like who's who's the backup to Ryan Ramchick? James Hurst, I guess. Like who is it? <laughs> who's a starter, bro? <laughs> I mean, I don't know who's. The, I, I really don't know who's the backup. Landon Young, he's the backup to Trevor Penny too. Like, <laughs> that's some, and he's not even I mean, healthy, right? So I mean, theoretically, if Penny got hurt, James Hurst moved to the left, and Pete was you know sliding. Who? You know, who? Pete go uh, Pete, bro. So it's it, you know it it that's a little concerning to me. The old line depth just gotta pray we don't have one of those seasons like we had the last two years. <laughs> Um, so, so that's the only thing we can hope for at this point. Uh, tight end is crazy, but like tight end is stacked, man. Like, <laughs> it is stacked, Ryan. Like it doesn't have like one elite player, you know. It doesn't have like a you know a like an elite tight end, but you have like Jawan Johnson, who's you know probably a you know a notch or two under elite, but he's you know growing. You got Foster Moreau, who I just feel like is kind of forgotten. Um, Taysom Hill, whatever you want to call it. You got Jimmy. Bro, Big I, Jimmy. I, Jimmy. I, I forgot. I forgot. You, I didn't even realize. I, I didn't even really hit to me that like Taysom was on the team until you just said it. I'm saying, bro. Like, Isn't that crazy? Mr. Do-It-All. Crazy. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we do have Taysom. Um, Edge still worries me, man. Like, oh, worries. It just like I I know I I will say this I do believe that the edge position just the players at edge will benefit with having a player like Brissy in the interior. They're going to benefit from having um, Colin Saunders in the interior. So I think the pass rush from that edge itself, from that perspective. Is gonna be is gonna be better and improved, but it, it like this is like this is the year for Carl Grandison, Big Creep. This is the year for Peyton Turner. Who first? If they 
Like they got to, they got to win, bro. Like I'm not saying they got to go out and just be like dominant pass rushers, but they got to consistently be at least average, average to maybe like good on a couple of games in terms of what they're bringing on on the edge because it's needed, man. You yeah. absolutely need it. I mean, honestly, when you look at it, you gotta wonder. Like, we have a lot of nine starters at defensive end. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of players that wouldn't start on all other teams. Like, if 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 we had like a star defensive end, Uh-oh. it'd be fine. Oh, you know, like a, like a Nick Bosa, somebody. Like whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and then you have Carl Grandison behind him and Pete Turner behind him. That is like okay, we got some cooking. You know what I'm saying? But not, but these are guys. These are more rotational type players, and that's just what it is, bro. Like it's hard finding great pass press rushers, man. It's so hard. You gotta draft them like in the top twelve, top thirteen. Sometimes you get lucky later. Um, so speaking, this is just of, what it is. So we're on this. Thing at it. We're on this thing about edge rushers, defensive ends. Derek Barnett, the defensive end, Tennessee. That draft Twitter bat shame entire draft season. Bro. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> bro. I was they they fat shamed Derek Barnett so much, and I took it personal because, like, as a fat, I was like, "Sit up." But like, anyway, he <laughs> he's love handles. <laughs> Man, we're still getting to the quarterback, bro. <laughs> um, in the SEC, so. Came out what a couple of like I don't even know what time is anymore. A couple of days ago, he requested a trade from the Eagles. He kind of sees like he's not, you know, he's just a he basically is a rotational pass rusher for the Eagles. Just like we have non-starters, he's a non-starter. However, he's at least earlier in his career, he kind of showed that he would he was at least an an average defensive end, um, and and got you know he was a productive player early in his mm-hmm. career, right? Where would you one? Would you trade for Derek Barnett, or would you feel like he would be kind of redundant to what they already have? And two, if you would, what would you give up for a player like Derek Barnett? Man, we got a. I give a six. I give a six. We got a first seventh from Sean Payton. <laughs> I give up a six. I think we got two six next year. So I give up one of them six. You know, maybe some conditional else. You know, because they're trying to get rid of him. So I don't know. So I don't know if the Eagles are trying to get rid of him. I just. I just think that, I mean, I don't know. I know that his agent requested a trade, and I don't know if they're, like, listening to offers or that was just something that his agent put out because he just don't want to be the Eagles anymore because he's not going to get playing time. That I don't know. Yeah. Um, but let's, let's, go, let's go on to this key word on Whitewell. Okay, let's go, let's go to, to the Whitewell. There's some – I don't even know what the word is. But if you if – you, Pay attention to like Niners subreddit. Someone on their subreddit who potentially allegedly broke the Chris McCaffrey trade to the Niners news before it happened is kind of putting some some smoke out there that what Nick Bosa wants to get paid, he wants to completely like reset like the market for a defensive player. Like reset it ridiculously. So 30 plus a year. 30, 35, I don't know. Don't know. And potentially like the Niners are I don't know if they like weren't expecting his his like his contract demands or whatever, like which I don't know how you would not. Like anyway. But maybe maybe they feel like they, they're not gonna be able to afford Nick Bosa. And they may potentially, if they can't extend him may try to move Nick Bosa to a team, maybe in the AFC, to maybe kind of recruit some of those draft, those first-round picks that they <coughs> kind of wasted in the Trey Lance deal. My first reaction to that is just like, that is just terrible team building, first of all. That is awful team building. Like, you, it is so ridiculously hard to find an elite edge rusher. You, not only do you draft one, you draft a great one, personality-wise, political-wise side. But arguably the best in the league. Like, yeah. arguably the best defensive end in the league. One defensive player of the year last year. Um, Young as hell. Not not even in his prime, Ryan. Like, you, if you want to, like, 
that Niners shootout, Sean Payton's and Drew Brees' last like great, great huzzah. Watching Nick Bosa going against like peak Ram, like right before like his body started breaking down, bro. Like that was some football, bro. Like that was ooh, ooh shit. Like sometimes Ram got the best of Bosa, and sometimes no Bosa was getting the best of him, bro. Like that was like that's the shit watching football. Where I'm just like, stop, bro. Like you just look. I love watching greatness. Great going against great. Like when yeah. that happens in football, it is nothing else like it. That aside. So that would one that'd be terrible team building from the Niners perspective and just a fucking debacle. And it's like, why but, now? You paying back Black Brock Purdy nothing. Like what what what's this the rush? Time to do it. Like pay the man. But if, if, if he's on the trade block and you got Nick Bosa, you got Derek Carr on the team. Who else is probably mad on the team? Landon Young. You got Luke in our Discord, bro. Like just this this unity and just bro, like what would it take? Like what what would it take? Especially like so the the subreddit's like the the like there's a team in the AFC potentially that's trying to make it make an offer for Nick Bosa. But let's say let's say the Niners stayed in the NFC. And Mickey Loomis is making that call. DA, DA know his his job is on the line. He knows that this is a must must win season for the Saints. Must for him for the Saints and for his job. Right? He knows if he does not win this year with this with this roster, he might not make it to next season as head coach. This might be his last opportunity to be a head coach in the league. If we're being real, oh right? yeah. Desperate people do desperate things, bro. I see it in my job all the time. Completely not like not an apples <laughs> to apples comparison, to be fair. But desperate people do desperate things. Mickey calls John Lynch, who's shown to be a very terrible GM. Um what would the offer be? I mean, Mac, a little Mac went for two firsts, a third, and a sixth. And that was like I mean, Khalil Mack passes prom, bro. Like this is like prom, like prom Nick Bosa. Like not even in his prom saying. yet. So I'm like, saying, well, have, has this, you got to pay him. You, you also got to pay him. You got to pay him. He and he gonna get paid. P a i d paid. So I don't know how you balance that, because. 49 is going to want some picks now. It's, it, to me, you can't start the conversation without two firsts. Got to be. Not Davenport. Not, not that first for our picks. Got okay. Start there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Get two firsts. If you're not, but, if you're not offering two firsts on, on, like, on the phone when you call in John Lynch, that should get Hang up. You know what I'm saying? Then you talk about what do you want to add? Do you want to add a second and a third? Do you want to add a third? Two thirds? It's like, you know, I give it up. <laughs> I give it up. It, sound, it sounds, not saying that I would do this move if I was a Saints or a team, but I think if, you, if, if you're the Niners, I'd be asking for three first round picks. Absolutely. I need three. That's what I'm I looking for. I need three. If I'm them, I'm, that's what I'm looking for. The only reason I don't, I think you shave off is because you got to pay. So Money. You, you going to ask me to pay three first round picks and pay this player 30, 30, 30, 30 plus, plus. That's what we paid Derek Carr. Like, right. Starting quarter franchise quarterback money. You pay to a defensive end who's going to get, you know, 16 sacks. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of sacks, right? <laughs> that's a lot of sacks. 16 sacks in a season versus, like, that's what I paid quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? So you ask me to pay him that. You gotta shave some of these picks off, bro. Like I'm taking something off your head. You don't want Pam, right? You know what I'm saying. You don't want Pam. You getting some picks. You getting some first round picks that you need. Like, let's make it happen. <laughs> could this I deal happen? Three. I couldn't do three first. I couldn't. You do couldn't it. do three. No. Could this deal happen with just draft pick compensation? No, like no, like picks and players. I think it can with, with just draft picks, but I think if you could throw a player or two in, I think it'll help. Who? You know what I'm saying? 
who we got on the Saints that's worth something. Um, it's going to be Lattimore. Um, they probably don't want Elvin Kamara. They got Christian McCaffrey. Right. Um, Adebo. It's probably going to be one of the corners. Adebo, a latte. Those are your great players on the roster. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't, besides them, bro, like, I can't really think of any other players that they would want. Maybe like a Chris Olave. I, I think he's like, I think he's, untu- I think he's untouchable. Oh, of course. I'm, that's what you're saying. Like, yeah, but if, if, I'm, not- if I'm them and I'm telling them what I want, it's going to be like those type of players. Well, I mean, the, yeah, and here's, and this is where it gets weird. Like the Niners are already, already threatened that they're not going to be able to pay Brandon Ayuk. Right. It's like, like y'all can't y'all can't pay any great players. Like, <laughs> like you, you don't you have a quarterback. You don't have a quarterback <laughs> to pay. Like that's what I'm saying. It's like, what? Where's the money? <laughs> um, would you do two first round picks in a Debo? Yeah, yeah. I, oh I would. man, like that's the <laughs> like when you draft a Debo and then the next year you draft a Latte Taylor and you have Lattimore, like that's the benefit you have it's like correct for for hitting on the latte yeah for hitting on the latte it's like okay well i would love to keep a deep boy i'm not saying that right but i'd rather have like a third great corner third good corner or fucking bolsa like it's not even a debate in my head bro like <laughs> don't vex you... me bro <laughs> see ya <laughs> And they never Last, have like really good corners in San Francisco, so they no, would actually ever. be like a great, like a really good starting corner for them. Last, just wild hypothetical: you throw Nick Bosa opposite of Cam next to Brian Bursey Br- mm-hmm. with Colin Sanders in the middle, healthy Demario, healthy, healthy Pete Warner, healthy Marshawn on the outside, healthy Adebo on the outside. Maybe huh. you throw in. You know, player zero and the slot. Mm-hmm. Mark Marcus made maybe I don't know if he's suspended, whatever. And Honey Badger. Yes. Where does that? Where does that defense like that is that is the best Saints defense, sure. talent wise. Then you, then you talking about Super Bowl? You, you brought at like, that point. It's Super Bowl a bust, and I and, right. bro, and I don't like as a fan, bro. as a fan, like I don't. Bro, I remember those Super Bowl of bust seasons. They were like when you don't win the Super Bowl, when it's oh, Super yeah. Bowl of bust with those expectations, it is. Oh, oh, but you get Bosa, bro. Like, and then think about the rotation, like we just talked about. Bosa, then you got Peyton Turner coming into his own and Big Creek. They just, Boss, rotational just play. Play. they just rotational players that when Nick Bosa just want to go read some mm. Trump tweets or something. Like, he just wanna go, like, go sit down and chill. We're going to bring Big Creep in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, man, that would be dope, bro. Like I said, I'd give up two firsts for him. We bro, gave not, up two firsts for Davenport. Not, not. Bro, not us at the Bears game in our section. And if Nick Bosa's on the team, like when the Bears are on the field, bro, we 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 all of us chant and lock, lock him up to Justin Fields, bro. Just... Lock him up. <laughs> oh, we we going to hell on the sled. Anyway, that yeah, was baby, just like a little. You wasn't in the Discord today, bro. Like if you know, you know. You you know. Um. This was just like a fun hypothetical thing. I I I will say though, I don't it things might be like uneasy in San Fran. So who knows, right? Just keep keep your head on the swivel. But this is it, man. Team is set. Team, I mean, set set ish. Set ish. You know, we'll, there'll it's be more changes. Set, yeah. It is. Um There'll be some changes here and there. Might be some, you know. Players cut, players sign, players claimed, et cetera, et cetera. We'll, so we'll keep track of that. I am, I'm going, I'm going on vacation. Oh, can't, can't say where I'm going. I am going on vacation on Thursday. Um, so, you know, unless it's something just major, 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 like, like I will, will try to, I, I need to just 
decompress <laughs> and yeah. rest uh, and get ready for this very, very busy NFL season, cover, you know, covering the Saints. Um, but today, you know, today was fun and exciting as much as I got to kind of kind of keep track of it as much as I could as things was unfolding. But thank y'all, like tremendously, like this is this is a time where shit is becoming going to become real for us in terms of everything that we do. Um, regular season is next week. Next Thursday, there will be football. It will be the Lions and the Chiefs on Thursday. Sunday will be the Saints and the Titans, and we will have you covered in the live stream. We will have you covered in. We're raffling off the home, like the home season opener to the Titans game. We got you covered. So this is the time to really be supporting the podcast, supporting the brand, retweets, putting on your story on Instagram. If you're watching this, I know I should have said this earlier, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, like, like, all that. Because this is the time, man. Like, we are full steam ahead. Um, we are tremendously, tremendously excited about this season. Not even just Saints related, right? Just just for us. Like, we're excited for us and and just growing our community, growing our growing our brand, cultivating what we have these last three plus years. Um, and we're proud to just build upon it. So thank y'all so much. Uh buckle up. <laughs> buckle up. Cause there's gonna be you know, it, we're Saints fans, right? Like this is this is just a way of life. This is what yep. it is being a Saints fan. So we'll be back uh sometime next week. I try to hit up Greg, man. Try to get Greg on the yeah, get Greg on the Greg on the pod. Um, <clears throat> I mean, chop, chop it up with him, and we we'll get something out for you guys next week. If 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 something major happens, where we got to do an emergency pod, and it has to be like major, bro. Like I'm not I'm not doing an emergency pod. If Traquan got traded, bro, we do an emergency pod. Like we lie down. At least I, fifteen I, minutes. We got fifteen we minutes. Got, right. we got, got, got to go, bro. Got to go. <laughs> but Anything else, like y'all, y'all gonna have to wait. So, but thank y'all so much. We can't, we can't stress that enough. Um, we, Ryan and I are still working on getting our, our merchandise in a place where we can send that out. I think I'm on to something that's gonna be a good option for us. So, be on the lookout for that. They probably won't be out before the start of the regular season, but hopefully, we're able to get them out in the month of September, right in the beginning of the regular season, so everyone can put in your orders and whatever I, what we really, what Ryan and I really need to do is just get a, I don't know if we're going to do, um, uh, what, what is it? Like, a something that just has, we need to get like sizes of like what people would need in terms of like when we're ordering a bulk order, of like largest, extra largest, blah, blah, blah. blah. So we, we kind of have an idea for that. So, but anyway, that's later. Thank y'all. We will be back. Um, enjoy the week. Enjoy this last week of like Saints free football. Cause after that, this is where like, the heartbreak, the highs, the lows, it all starts, bro. Like, this is this is it. So, we'll be back next week. With that, we're out. Peace. Got questions? O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge, just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts.